Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor working in London and I try to make these kind of study YouTube videos on the side. So this video is for anyone who's potentially applying to medicine or on that journey to applying to medicine. It's kind of a way for me to hopefully talk you through the entire process of the application, be as transparent as I can be, and try and give you some tips and kind of lessons that I learned along the way, things like picking your GCSE subjects, picking your A-level subjects, picking your unis, things like that. This video I think will be super long, so feel free to kind of jump to whatever kind of bit is most relevant to you. So I guess the only correct place to start is how did I end up thinking maybe I want to do medicine for the rest of my life? Okay, let's get the obvious out of the way. Yes, I'm Asian and it was decided when I was in my mom's womb that I would have to go and study medicine. Okay, I'm joking, don't worry. Um, okay, completely honestly, yes, being Asian, you're kind of brought up in the household where medicine is always in the conversation because it has job security, because it's got a reasonably good salary by the end of it. But if I'm being completely honest, around the age of, I don't know, 12, 13, I was more into maths and that's what I was probably considering doing. Um, at the time I thought, you know, science subjects were just basically lots of memorizing. Um, until kind of about 14, 15, then I started to speak to my teachers and they kind of told me the truth, which was a kind of maths at university is very different to maths at school. Um, maths at university, number one, is much, much more difficult. And number two, it's much more theoretical. And that kind of started to put me off this idea of potentially doing maths. I was kind of more interested in doing something with lots of person to person contact. And that's when I was thinking, you know what, maybe I should kind of consider medicine. And to kind of find out a bit more about it, I decided let me go in with a completely open mind and try some work experience. So that's what we'll talk about next. Okay, so let's talk about work experience. Let me tell you first what I did for work experience as part of my application. So I started off with a week at a general practice and my time was basically split half to 50% with admin, 50% was um, kind of sitting in consultations with the practice nurse and with the GP. I spent a week at Princess Alexandra Hospital in Harlow, which was the best week of work experience I can possibly imagine. They organized like a really good program for me. I spent time in theaters. I spent time kind of shadowing the radiologists. I spent time shadowing the junior doctors on call. So that was really good. Um, I spent three days in another hospital, King George Hospital, where I just did general surgery. I also spent a week where I just did the mornings for a week in a hospital in India. Basically, I was on holiday there with my cousins and I kind of organized that where I just spent the mornings and I sat in on a diabetic clinic every morning for a week. Um, and then one more thing that I did was I spent just an afternoon, so about two or three hours, at a lab in the London Chess Hospital, it was a stem cell lab. And that actually came about because it was part of my extended project qualification that I did in my kind of AS year. Um, but it ended up being this really cool thing that my interviewers really liked and I'll talk about my interviews later on. So that was my work experience. Okay, so let's talk about volunteering now. So I did kind of three separate volunteering things. Number one is I got in contact with my local nursing home and I went there every Sunday lunchtime um, for about two hours to kind of help kind of serve food out to all the residents there. It actually started out as a three month thing that I was doing for my Duke of Edinburgh, but I ended up kind of staying there for over a year, I think in the end. The second thing I did was with one of my mates, I volunteered at our local St. John Ambulance. So they kind of teach us first aid. We went for kind of a session or two every month. And then we actually got to kind of help out at some of their big events, so things like the London Marathon, things like kind of football matches we kind of volunteered at. And the third thing I did was I, um, as part of my school, they organized us kind of for three months every Wednesday afternoon to go to a local school for special needs kids. And there we could kind of help the students kind of with their learnings. Okay, so that's just a summary of both my work experience and volunteering that I did for my application. A few points that I wanna say about work experience. Number one, you have to be really organized and you have to apply early. So especially for kind of the healthcare things like the Princess Alexandra work experience that I got, that I talked about, which was really, really cool. Those kind of really exciting programs, they kind of have application forms and things that have to be submitted sometimes 12 months or a year in advance of when you're actually gonna do the work experience. So be organized. Number two, the volunteering things I talked about are just as important as your classic healthcare, kind of your hospital GP work experience. Um, actually, sometimes interviewers, especially these days, are more interested in your interview to find out about your volunteering experiences because everyone's done the hospital, everyone's done the kind of the GP shadowing. So make sure you prioritize both. 
Number three, if you've got friends at your school or out of school that are also applying to medicine, please, please, please work together. So if you see a good opportunity for work experience, then tell them because number one, it's so much better for you. It's so much more fun if you go along with your mates. And number two, remember you're competing with so many people for medicine across the entire country. You don't also have to compete with your friends at school. If you work together, you'll do so much better as a group. And the number four, don't think, oh, he's got six work experience or he's got three work experience. I've only got two. It really doesn't matter kind of the number of work experience or volunteering things that you've done. It really matters how you can translate that into your personal statement and your interview. And I'll link a video kind of somewhere up there where I go through my personal statement and you can see kind of line by line how I put all of that work experience, all of that volunteering into my personal statement. And that's what they see at the end of the day. And that's what's more important, not kind of just ticking off and doing 10 different things. Okay, let's talk kind of GCSEs now. So the optional GCSEs that I picked were German, French, Geography and Religious Studies. And if I'm being completely honest, the two that I still kind of recommend to everyone out of those four would be Geography and Religious Studies. Those are the kind of ones that I found fairly straightforward, fairly simple. I think uh, languages, for someone who's kind of going into medicine and has that kind of typical medic mind, languages are always slightly harder. That's what I found. And also picking two languages is absolutely silly. I kind of got away with it because I did French a year early in year 10 and then I did my German in year 11. But even then I kind of found it really confusing. So if you're gonna pick a language, most kind of schools say you have to pick a language. I pick only one rather than two. Um, the second point I want to make about GCSE options is that it really matters kind of not what subject you pick, but how you do in your GCSE subjects. Um, so pick the subjects that you think you will do well in. So for example, if you're an artist and you want to do DT because you think, you know, that's what I'm really good at, that's what I enjoy, then absolutely pick DT. But there's no benefit in picking a GCSE subject because you think universities will look at it and be like, whoa, that's pretty exciting, that's pretty cool. For the GCSEs anyway, all they really care about is your results, not really the subjects that you got your results in. Okay, let's talk about picking your university choices now. So you get four university choices. I decided to go for Cambridge, Imperial, King's College London and Southampton. And then for my fifth choice, I went for St. George's for Biomedical Sciences. Okay, so absolutely you should go for unis that you see yourself having a really good time at. I think that's absolutely true and that's a general advice. But I want to caveat that, and most people will probably disagree with me, but I also think it's really, really important to pick your unis based on the strengths of your application. So for example, if you have a really high UCAT score, you should pick unis that put lots of emphasis on the UCAT, such as say King's College London. The reason I say that is because whatever uni you end up at, you will have a great time, you will make really good friends, and you will make the most of your opportunity. So for example, in my case, I kind of, once I thought I wanted to do medicine, I thought, you know what, I want to do medicine at Imperial. That would be kind of my dream. But you know what, when I got my Cambridge offer, I was like, you know what, let me think about it. And when I was going to Cambridge on my first day, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't that hyped. I was gonna kind of thinking, I'm gonna miss all the kind of the, the Tamil dance shows and things like that. But you know what, I had an amazing time at Cambridge. I made some awesome friends. Yes, I didn't do the things that I thought I'd do in London, but I did kind of different things and sometimes slightly better things. So yeah, wherever you go for uni, you will enjoy the journey, you will enjoy the experience. So apply to unis that will suit your application. So look at your strengths and also consider what are your weaknesses and try to avoid unis that put lots of emphasis on what you think might be your weaknesses. Okay, let's talk about A-levels now. So when I applied, we had our AS level exams at the end of our lower six and then our A2 or A-level equivalent exams at the end of our upper six. Um, when I picked my A-levels, I went for my four full A-levels, which was maths, further maths, bio and chem. And I did economics as my AS and I dropped it at the end of lower sixth. So things are different for you guys. You just have your A-level exams at the end of two years. So kind of using my experience, if I was picking my A-level choices now, um, what would I do? Well, there's a few things I take into account. Number one, um, I would pick the same number of subjects and no more than what my unis are offering out. So for example, if all my unis are giving offers based on three subjects, such as A star AA or A star A star A or AAA, then I'd go with three subjects. I think there's very limited value in having a fourth or fifth subject that sometimes people do. 
You can use that time to relax, to spend on your personal state, when your UCAT, your BMAT, your interview, etc. So the second thing I want to say is you have to do chemistry as one of your A-levels for medicine. All the unis require it. With biology, you don't have to do it, but from my experience of the medicine course, I think if you haven't done biology at A-level, then the start of the course would be much more difficult. Not impossible, but more difficult. And then for your third A-level choice, I think you can do whatever you want, except fulfill these two criteria, which is number one, something, a subject that you would enjoy studying. And then number two, um, something that you think you can do well in. And if you find a subject that marries those two together, then you go for that subject. Um, so that's what I'd say for A-level subjects. One other thing actually I should say is people talk about should I do physics um, because it might help me for the BMAT section too. And my advice for this is no, basically. Um, I actually followed this advice um, and I picked physics AS level for about a month and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. and. I ended up changing and scrapping it and going to economics and I was absolutely fine for the BMAT. So I think it's more important to pick a subject that you think you'll do well in, you'll enjoy studying, rather than trying to pick a subject that you think will be really useful for um, the BMAT, for example. Okay, so let's now talk a little bit about the aptitude test. So in the UK, there's kind of three tests. There's a the UCAT, there's the BMAT and there's the GAMSAT. So I've taught kind of students for all three of these exams and maybe I'll do a video in the future kind of comparing different courses and different question banks and what I think might be good and what might be think might be better. But for now, let me just say the number one kind of advice for studying for any of these exams is please do timed questions. There's loads of research out there which says that when people or students are preparing for an exam that's very tight on time, the most useful thing and pretty much the only useful thing is to do timed questions rather than taking loads of time and doing your questions and feeling good when you get the correct answer. That actually has very limited benefit in actually doing well in the exam. So the best way to start studying for any of those exams is to just do a mock and do it timed and see how you get going. And then the last thing we want to talk about is medical school interviews. So first of all, if you're watching this and you have an interview coming up very soon, absolutely massive congrats because you're literally at the final hurdle before hopefully getting an offer to study medicine. Um, the really annoying thing about medical school interviews is you get very little notice usually between getting a letter which says, oh, okay, you're invited for interview and the actual interview day. Usually it's a week, sometimes even less, sometimes just over a week. So there's a few points to kind of think about. Number one, because of that, it's quite helpful to kind of start thinking about interview preparation, just do the basics, kind of work out what kind of style interview that medical school has. So is it kind of a panel interview? Is it more unis are kind of these days using an MMI, so kind of a circuit interview where you do lots of mini interviews. Uh, the second thing is try get in touch with medical students, first and second years, especially at that university, because they can give you an insight into kind of what the style of interview is, what kind of questions may come up and kind of something unique about that uni that you might be able to bring up to your interviewers, show that you've done your homework. Number three, one of the best resources is to use YouTube. Honestly, there's so many kind of medic YouTubers out there um, these days and they're all talking about kind of their experience of med school interviews. So kind of Google your medical school interview, find a YouTube video where someone's talked about that interview and their experience, that's useful. And the fourth thing, which is probably the most important thing is absolutely know your personal statement inside out because um, that's the one thing that you've given to them. That's the one thing in your control. I had a mate who wrote in his personal statement, I remember um, that he watched CT scans being done and things like that. And then the interview asked him, what does CT stand for? And he had no idea. So simple things like that, make sure you don't kind of get sloppy. Make sure you know every single thing in your personal statement kind of inside out. Okay, so there you go, guys. Um, that was a really long video, but I thought it'd be quite useful just to give my reflections on the different parts of the application process. I really hope at least one person found this video kind of useful. Um, if you did, then I'd love for you to drop a like. Please comment in the video as well what kind of things you found useful and what kind of other content you think would be helpful to you or potentially other students. And I'll try my best to kind of get the content out for you guys. So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you so much for all your support on the channel and I will see you in the next one.